Thing that is in, in Excel, a student might have figured it out. You can line 
like to see that interview in, in metaphases or chromosomes of 20 cells in the in X axis, what they call it the carrier graph, the X axis here, down there are the chromosome numbers of the human cell. So here is chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And this, you can see already, is a main cell, normal main cell. We have two, here's the, the Y axis, chromosome copy number, there are two, because it's diploid, and in man, there's one only, it's half of the way, but if you like, monosome. X and Y chromosomes. So two of those here, four others are there. And in, so these are the images of, of essentially, essentially different cells that are going to usually line up and next to each other. And you could see three dimensionally that they're completely parallel, meaning that their karyotypes are identical and they stay. If you look with the same instrument, with the same diagram, and it cancels it. This one is breast cancer, another uh, breast cancer line. You can see now that it is a completely different carrier type graphically. It is no longer the smooth parallel lines of the normal cell. They go up and down, they have a new carrier type. Uh, you see the copy number here of the material is three, then it goes down to one, it's up to four, it's to five. And you can see the lines are no longer totally parallel, but they oscillate along this path. And this pattern is actually remarkably stable. It's a, it's a stability within instability. That is characteristic of the cancer. If, even if you passage this cancer 60 generations in culture, so it's more angry than isolated together, it will look more or less the same. Unless you put on some strong selective pressure, like heart selection, so then it changes the character, which the cancer cell can do not the same when you have in cell it's the cancer that becomes persistent and you never do. So as specific uh, as the cell is in inflexibility, the carrying types of cancer in the cell in tumors are heterogeneous and it is therefore stipulated and has been debated for nearly hundred years now ever since for very first suggested chromosomal activation cell, also cancer, and subsequently the majority of geneticists favored the view that its mutations is still debated whether because of whether flexible, but other specific characters as I just showed you, or whether stable and specific mutations are causes of cancer that we not all see or the so-called oncogenes now, that would as a consequence of their presence cause cancer and also destabilize the character. And the stabilized carrier type is recognized even by the mutation people, although you can hardly find it in modern textbooks anymore. You don't see a carrier type anymore. Everything is expressed in genes or genetics. The carrier type is considered something for the old ladies, people of the, uh, the last generation, who is through microscope and working in low budget. But for the for the girl, that's the genetic cancer research, you have a gene array for thousand dollars a piece. Show diving on the south of the spot to interpret the search whether the left vessel, the left vessel, the left should be taken down or not. That's what they really say at the end. I don't know how they see it, but they do see a lot. So, this is the, the, the question that has, has not been settled in 100 years of debate. Is it chromosomes? Is it mutation? Is it a cause of cancer? And we are solving it by now. It's 50 years. <laughs> so, so the mutation theory holds that a set of six three or six mutations of specific genes that are termed oncogenes as a result of these mutations, then meaning that they cause cancer, transform normal cells to cancer cells independent of carrier protein alteration. They recognize that they invest that a lot of genetic type changes, but they say this is a consequence or an accidental across the cell is transformed. Popular proponents of the mutation theory, all of my former friends and current friends are some like Bishop, Barnes, Weinberg, and Fogelstein, so all of the leading cancer researchers to start with the mutation theory. So, but there is no direct functional proof for the, for the mutation theory. Despite 30 years of research, Despite uh, 
gene technology that is smart, that's marvelous. You can put any gene in any cell you want. If you want. And they have done that with these oncogenes. genes. They put them into normal cells. But so, as you can see, the results are the best ambiguous. If not, there's certainly no way to What happened is, when you take a convenient or whatever you call it, a consensus number of oncogenes that is said to be or thought to be sufficient for cancer, one of them published in Nature recently by Weinberg and by other specialists who have done the same thing. It takes three or four, put them into normal human cells, and then they say, see, when you wait long enough, after several months, there is a tumor cell coming up as a clone. What they don't tell you is they put millions of cells in, into this culture that all have the same oncogenes and are not transformed. Out of which, over months, comes occasionally a clone of transformed cells. So what that means is when you get for, for transfecting, as that is called, millions of cells with oncogenes that are supposedly causing the cancer, you get only one in 10 to the 5 to transform. That means these genes are not sufficient to do the job. Something else is required. And that is more or less openly acknowledged. So they are not sufficient for tumors. And the answer of the mainstream is we need another gene yet that we haven't found yet. But they have never found a complete set yet, although the Nobel Prize was given for this idea already in 89. So we have to catch up soon to justify the Nobel Prize for the next one. So the only genes that induce transformation, another result of these experiments, in one of 10 to the 5 cells, are not necessary to maintain the transformed phenotype. They do their job naturally because tumors and leukemias induced by oncogenes persist even if the oncogenes are lost or turned off experimentally with, with experimentally controllable promoters. Tap on, tap off, tetracycline promoters in the US, if the lost tetracycline the genes fell off or shut off. Once the tumor is, is established in a couple of weeks, it is no longer dependent on the oncogene. The oncogene, in other words, is not maintaining the transformed phenotype is not sufficient to initiate. And all cells that have been studied for karyotypes, and that's only very few who have done that, I think you can imagine one of them who did, um, were found to be under And that is not mentioned in Asia where that was one of the leading figures of why they came out. I even said in the karyotypes, isn't that interesting information at least? They said, no, no, we don't need that. It's enough that you have your six mutations. That they have seven chromosomes in these cells, plus the six mutations that count that is the equivalent of another in our case, 20,000 genes. It's not relevant to them because they don't have any more mutations. So they are not getting this mutations. So what is now the role of mutations for oncogenes and gas? The conclusions from these three kinds of experiments are oncogenes are not sufficient and are not necessary to maintain the cancer cells. So what is their role in transformation? That is the one example I wanted to describe today, and then I'll try. The carrot, you can see, here's the theory that we think uh, how it works for the dust. They check the how cancer is generated in general. In, in efforts to explain this, we have recently proposed a two-step carriotripping cancer theory. That's, once you have seen that, then it's almost, I'm almost over. The, the first step in this process of carcinogenesis is that carcinogens, and also the oncogenes, which function like carcinogens, destabilize the karyotype by inducing random and employee. Some of them might also induce mutation, but that's the second. The critical essential point for cancer is that they destabilize the karyotype. And that you see in your cancer cell. And that explains uh, the same story about half of all known carcinogens that are not mutagens, but like asbestos, as we are describing the same thing. So once you have an aneuploid cell, the aneuploid destabilizes the karyotype automatically, or catalytically, 
by and balancing teams of proteins that segregate and synthesize the nuclear bonds. Imagine you have in the most balanced, physically complex apparatus, is a spinning apparatus itself, segregating 46 chromosomes symmetric to 28 hours if it has it. And that works 99.9% accurate. If there is a slightest imbalance, if there's a little bit more of two million instead of clock in your head, it can be or biasing or something. Then this thing is out of balance and it's like you have a long, strong, uh, long leg and a short leg, you start limping and you become aerophone and they have the nuclear effect by constantly changing itself. It's because of these mental imbalances, physical imbalances in the spin of the body, which is a very balanced sensitive change. Or even in the enzyme teams, the repair enzymes, for example, that make the tricks in DNA. If you have a big translation, there's a name, there's a uh, DNA is polymerase and a, 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 a ligase in the mix. If you change the balance a little bit, it's, it's either hyperizing the DNA or stops breaking. If they have the right balance, you get more human gift, and that's, that balance is maintained by the balance of genes in the chromosome that have been balance for three million years of life. Now, if you change that, if you change thousands of genes by the volume, thousands of things are out of In most cases, in fact, the androids are done. It has to find an equilibrium that it can maintain the survival. So, the android destabilizes the pattern by the volatility and thus keeps changing the pattern type and thus initiates and maintains the karyotypic evolution that constantly evolves and change because of the inherent, inherent instability. Most of these newly evolving karyotypes are again random unemployees that are functionally inferior to normal cells or even least they are Occasionally, however, like play Goulet and play Darwin, a rare cancer-causing karyotype evolves. It's a long way from a real autonomous species as has to fly now and climbing up on the tree or flying by the bird. That's not it yet, but it's good enough to be in a problem's parasite and compete with one cell for which it just goes. And these cancer causing carryback are then stabilized by the inherent instability, against the inherent instability of unemployment by selection for transforming function. So they keep, as you saw, see on these carrier graphs that I showed earlier, they keep fluctuating, oscillating along. Clone the value, but as soon as they go too far outside, they will not replicate enough. They will not maintain, not be maintained as cancer cells, and they will be lost. And that's a typical phenotype. The cancers in all of them, the more nucleoid they are, the more necrosis you get. These are dead cells that have actually carried to be suicidal. So this value theory then postulates that clone yet flexible carrier are the genome of the genomes of cancers. Modifications by genomes and in now that part of the chromosome of the genetic material that makes the cancer cell. It's the carrier type as a whole, just as the carrier type as a whole makes us either a monkey <coughs> or a dog or a cat <coughs> or human. It's not only a case you can mutate us as long as you want, you will never get a monkey. We have to rearrange the chromosomes, or like the let's say the first one you want to portions in the SUV, you cannot mutate the portion, you have to rearrange the segments. That's the equivalent of the chromosomes, and that's what the Darwin work for the world of work speciation has done. Here's the graphic of the whole stem. Here's the normal karyotype with diploid stable cells. In step one, unemployment devices reduced either by carcinogen, which I would call it unemployment again from a black kind of point of view or sometimes spontaneous way by accident. And then you have random anaplodium, random anaplodium, which are saving. And they keep changing the cells, but they are too stable at the point zone. This one is the most stable, that's why most of them then they are copied because sooner or later the chromosome is missing, it is essential for the viability of the cell, and it dies. And occasionally, it turns out to be it can always then for that reason to come up with this cancer cell. And that would be the cancer is just a carried form. But it was an evolution. And once this happens, the cancer
ten types but continuously all fit it. It was originated in a, a nuclear pool of carrier types, is the cancer cell, and now it has a certain degree of flexibility depending on carrier type and moves on over many generations. And locationally, again it makes it it makes it a different evolutionary step when it's challenged by chemotherapy, then it's called the system combination comes up that differs from the character very high or the type of system that the only established from the cancer that again differs from the character very high. Okay. Although the basic character type is maintained is just this very much like the people from the monkey to the human or forever or forever. So here's this one experiment that I was going to mention and then I told each other to test the cancer theory, karyotypic theory. We have asked for the activated oncogenes that have been tested for so long. Now, do indeed induce good tumor genetic cells with individual cancer specific karyotypes, much like in the species. Moreover, we ask whether the different tumor genetic cell lines arising from human cells transfected with the same oncogenes as said in these experiments here. Transfect millions of cells to get a few transformed clones. So it's very low efficiency. Would, it would, we would predict if it's an evolution, a spontaneous evolution of the carrier type, that each of these clonal new cancers that comes out of a homogeneous pool of human cells all transfected with the same oncogenes would each have their own carrier type. Like, like all the progeny of whatever the original mammal was, uh, has, has, uh, has a carrier type that is in part still conserved in all the derivatives. And again, would have, and again, like individual species evolving from the same ancestors, having individual characters of females. So, and the relevance of this for testing the mutation theory is that if individual tumorigenic lines from the same parental cells with the same oncogenes have individual karyotypes and phenotypes, it would follow that the oncogenes have played only an indirect role in transformation as postulated by our theory. It's the karyotype that makes it a cancer cell and the oncogene was essentially like a carcinogen. It's like the vegetation 30 years before to get the cancer from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. By contrast, the mutation theory would predict that tumorigenic cell lines with a show up on these transfected cells with normal carrier types. They don't spell it out, but they don't say it should change the carrier type. And would have the same phenotypes because the oncogenes they have are encoding these phenotypes. So, indeed, we found what the character theory predicts, and that will be shown on my last slide now. We found that different tumorigenic cell lines rising from human cells transfected with the same set of oncogenes have individual clonal carrier types. That's essentially prognostic cancer experiment here. So, here you see. Uh, here, two cells, or two cell lines, that's just under the microscope. You have to look at the anatomy, you could probably get more different phenotypes, but you can see these cells are phenotypically morphologically piglish, quite easily distinguished. Yet, they are generated by exactly the same oncogenes in human epithelial cells, non epithelial cells. So, these phenotypes cannot be so different from the same moment, must be something else. And here you can see what it is. It's these two karyotypes that you will, that belong to the two cells. You see the white papers. And they came from this. These were the cells that were transfected. The oncogenes were added. And generally, I'm sorry, which you can see, right now, I'm sorry, maturity. And then you isolate from the colonies in agar, and it's quite bad. And these are from these long columns to make it compare. And here is a similar example of uh, two different products again generated with the same set of So that brings me to my last slide.
like the some of our experiments confirm the theory that the genomes of cancer cells are flexible, strongly carried by the body that Thank you. Uh, five minute break, but please don't leave the room.